I've been trying. <laughs> Sorry. Are we too close? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> Do you want me to? Hello, hello. Hey, hello, hello. You were handing me back your list. So I was like, no. <laughs>
Mic check. Welcome, welcome, welcome to St. Stephen Live. Welcome to our midweek pre-show. Midweek service begins at 7 p.m. Did they hear me, Alex? Welcome to our pre-show. Uh, it is almost time for midweek service. Midweek service begins at 7 p.m. And boy, does Rev have a word for us. Tyler. She does. You want to introduce yourself first? I said she does. He oh, does. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, welcome to St. <laughs> Stephen Live. I'm your host, Crystal Goodner. And I'm Tyler Anderson. Yeah, Pastor does have a mighty word for us today. He's going to continue his sermon series, A Personal Verse for a Public Virus, The Lord is My Shepherd. He's talking about Psalm 23, and today uh, his sermon title is God of the Hydrated Life. Ooh, last week was so good when he uh, broke down about us being laid beside the still waters and about God allowing this time of pandemic to be a time of rest. A lot of times we're up and moving, moving. I know we are. Yes. And uh, instead of fighting against it, just go with the flow. And so tonight he's taking it even deeper, God of the Hydrated Life. I like that. That's right. And we want to apologize to everybody. We, we missed you last week. We had some technical difficulties. We got those resolved um, and we were able to stream on Facebook. But unfortunately, to our TV audience um, and to our YouTube audience, we weren't able to be with you. But we hope you came over to Facebook and participated with us. But we want you to stay connected uh, during this time of social distancing. And one of the key ways that you can do that is by sending us your information. When we uh, became aware of the issues, we sent emails out. We sent alerts through our, uh, our St. Stephen Church app. But send us your email to info at sscLive.org so that we can stay connected to you. So we can stay connected to you. Hey, wherever you're watching from, do us a favor real quick. If you're on Facebook, all you have to do is simply go down to the uh, left-hand tab of the page and press share. And then you can, can you share the broadcast also on um, sscLive.tv? You can. There's a button where you can, um, it says reminder. When you click that reminder button, uh, you can type in an email address that you want to send uh, to that person, whoever it is. Send it to them that way. All right. And um, on YouTube, you can always uh, share it also on YouTube. Speaking of sharing, you guys are doing an amazing job of sharing the daily devotionals. What are your favorites? Say it in the comments section. We'll give you a shout out. What word has Rev given that has been your favorite so far? Every day it seems to get higher and higher and better and better. But uh, he puts a lot of time and consideration into doing this. And you guys have spoken and you love it. Yeah, I wish, I wish everybody could really see the time and preparation. It's like he's getting ready to preach a Sunday morning yes. sermon. He's really preparing for these words. Um, and we post them uh, uh, Monday through Saturday uh, at 8 a.m. on all of our social media platforms, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and sscLive.org. Uh, we send you an email so you can see it. We did receive a comment from Terry For Forey. Uh -huh. um, she said, thank you for continuing to think about us and give us this daily bread. I know, Pastor, we've talked several times during this whole thing, and all he asks about are the members. If we've heard anything from anybody, and he's, his concern is, is, is real. His concern is just making sure that he is giving you a word to get you through this time. And it doesn't matter if you're not a St. Stephen member. We've had people from all across the world that are watching, and they're joining too. So don't forget, you have an opportunity to join this ministry, join our e-campus. Even uh, during this time of on-campus is closed, but online is fully thriving. I asked the question, what was your favorite um, devotional? And uh, Mr. James Davis said, being in control. I love that. I love that. Um, I see Miss Arnett is on here and want to send a special shout out to Miss Arnett. She is uh, our part of our uh, Hardin County family, our St. Stephen family, and she'd expressed that she just lost a loved one to COVID-19. And so our thoughts and prayers are with you, Miss Arnett. We love you. We're praying for you and anyone that has been directly affected uh, from this uh, virus. We're definitely praying for you and uh, lifting you up in prayer. And this Miss Paula McCraney, I hear that she's doing wonderful. That is awesome. And speaking of prayer, if you need any prayer um, during this time, our prayer ministry is on standby. You can send us an email um, to prayer at ssclive.org because uh, we want to pray for you and we really want to uh, intercede on your behalf so that God can meet your needs wherever you are. 
All right, speaking of meeting needs, we have something for you. We're really going to start expanding our programming. Uh, we've heard from you guys, and it really has turned into, we're turning into like a network, right? <laughs> we're going to have something for each and every one of you. Uh, we've got Pause for Praise coming up every Tuesday at noon with Minister Richard Lockett. And I want to I pause, pause, pause right there. Mm -hmm. This is uh, something that we started uh, actually on yesterday. Um, and it had a great turnout, but this uh, particular Bible study uh, is tailored for seniors. Yeah. Um, so getting seniors acclimated with technology and then pausing uh, for a nice Bible study lesson. I like that. Pause for praise. Uh, pause for praise. Um, there is something going on, the youth ministry Zoom room, Tyler? Yeah, so every uh, Wednesday at 5 o'clock, right before we come on here, our youth director, Lanisha Porter, and our youth ministry leaders are hosting a conference call um, via Zoom where we can see each other and everything like that. Um, so we invite you to come into that every Wednesday at 5. The number is listed on the graphic, so please go to our social media for that. But we have a video for you to check out right now, so let's go to the video. Hello, St. Stephen. It is me, Lanisha Porter, the director of the youth ministry here on the Louisville campus. I am super excited to let you guys know that during this quarantine, although we may be isolated, we are not alone. I would like to introduce to you the Zoom Room series in which it is a virtual Bible study for any youth between the ages 11 to 17. And we will meet every Wednesday from the comfort of your home. Invite a friend, invite a loved one, invite anyone you know who wants to log in for a quick word um, and fellowship with other people. Although this is a hard time and we are not able to fellowship together physically, we can still come together, enjoy the word of God and catch up with one another and just stay connected. So please be sure to download the Zoom app. You can find it in your app store, no matter what device you use and you simply download it. And then you use this login ID to join in every Wednesday. We will meet for an hour or less. Um, and we will have a lot of fun. So please be sure to join us. We would love to have you. Thank you so much, Miss Lanisha and uh, parents. Please make sure your young people are involved in this initiative. So during this time of uh, this global pandemic, money, the topic of money has come up a whole lot. And guess what? Here at St. Stephen Church, we have something coming just for you. That's right. George Demery, our COO, our Chief Operating Officer here at St. Stephen Church, will be giving a, a weekly lesson on Thursdays at 12 noon um, called Your Money Matters. Your Money Matters with George Demery. I know I got my stimulus check and I've been like, what should I do with it? <laughs> so hopefully George Demery is going to give us some good insights on what we can do with our stimulus checks. Oh, we absolutely love that, Mr. George Demery. And uh, be on the lookout for that. Look at that handsome man there, Mr. George Demery every Thursday at noon. And again, I'm excited because it's like we're doing our own network thing here. And we're going to have something for everyone. And uh, we appreciate all the viewers. We appreciate all the comments, all the shares. And uh, I know Mr. Kevin Willis is tuned in. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Um, let's see. I've got some other names. Mr. Cheryl Wright. And we uh, gave a shout out to Miss Arnett. And then Miss Karen is watching as well. And I promise you, SSCLive.tv, we're going to give some shout outs on that platform as well. And you said you YouTube is becoming more engaged. Yeah, YouTube is becoming a very popular platform. A lot of people like it because they can put it on their 55-inch TV. That's right. That's what you're doing on, with your stimulus check, right? I might. Okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, YouTube is, is, like I said, a very popular platform because you can put it on your 55-inch TV. Um, and it's really accessible on any device, uh, an iPad, a tablet, or your cell phone. All right, someone asked a question. Miss Akilah, big shout outs to her. She works with us over at Simmons College. She's asking for the code again for the Zoom room, for the kids' Zoom. It's on the graphic on our Facebook. Okay, it's on the graphic on our Facebook. And so stay connected with us, and that's where everything you need is right there on our social media. So, uh, oh, the Kingdom's Kid. We want to talk about the Kingdom's Kids weekly lesson. 
She said we have something for everybody. We have something for everybody. Kingdom Kids, um, our, our children's ministry, will be hosting a week, uh, posting rather a weekly lesson that can be found on their Facebook page, which is St. Stephen's, apostrophe S, Kingdom Kids. Um, and that is actually starting on this Sunday. So parents, please grab your kids for this lesson. Um, and it can be watched at your leisure whenever you want to watch it. You don't have to sit at one point, at one place at one time. You can do it at your leisure. And they have a lot of unique resources, like a video, like some questions. They have a lot of unique resources. Wow. I tell you, hey, if you're just now tuning in, welcome to the pre-show. We're kicking it off before our midweek Bible study, 7 p.m. Bible study begins. Uh, Dr. Cosby is continuing the series, a personal verse for a public virus. The Lord is my shepherd. And today's word is God of the hydrated life. Are you drinking your water? I am. That's all I'm drinking. <laughs> And you're looking very svelte, Mr. Tyler Anderson. Oh, well, thank you. All right. Uh, we've got some. Who do we have behind here? Who is this? <laughs> this gentleman with his mask on, you guys. I tell you, we are taking these precautions very seriously here at the Stephen. And he is here for a very good reason. We want to say congratulations to Mr. Jason Claiborne. Can we get some virtual claps? Why are we giving him claps? We are giving him some claps because his single, Praise Belongs to You, um, his single with Jason Claiborne and the Atmosphere Changers, reached number 30 on the Billboard charts. Congratulations. Debuted, Debuted, rather. Wow. At. Congratulations to Minister J. Clay. He's our very own and uh, the group and just doing some wonderful things for the kingdom. If you've got some great things going on, we want to hear about it. We want to shout you out and you can send that information to info at ssclive.org. And we want to we want to encourage you to continue to support Jason Claiborne and his choir, the Atmosphere Changers. You can visit iTunes, Google Play. You can download their single Praise Belongs to You. Uh, and they just actually released another single called Creator uh, last week. How do you know everything? I don't know. Maybe because someone oh. in that graphic looks a little <laughs> bit like you. It's my Mr. Twin. Tyler Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but y'all doing some wonderful things. And so uh, big ups to uh, Mr. Jason Claiborne. And we have got a birthday today. Tyler, you want to sing happy birthday? Let's call Jason up for that one. Okay. But he's going to have to grab it. We want to send a very big birthday shout out to Miss Pam Green, yeah. who is part of our Deaf and Hard of Hearing ministry here at the church. Uh, we uh, love her and everyone in that ministry that uh, are here helping, still continuing to help and uh, continue in that ministry during this time. And we just want to wish her a very, very happy birthday. That's right. We also want to acknowledge we're we're in a we're in a theme of celebrating some people. We want to celebrate all of our um, first responders, our hospital personnel, grocery store clerks, um, anybody that's serving on the front lines. We want you to send us your photos of you and your loved ones that are serving. If you know somebody. Um, Send it to us, um, send their photo to us, send their name to us, uh, to info at ssclive.org. Uh, we want to acknowledge them and celebrate them. All right, and let's go ahead and give a shout out to those people, Miss Michelle Porter, Miss Kim Wilson, Robert Owens, Kim Mitchell, Daphne Bibb, I believe, Daphne Bibb, uh, Alicia Oldham, and so these are the ones that we know about, but if we, uh, if you work in the healthcare industry, it's just not limited to healthcare, right? It's not. If you're if you work Servants at Kroger, anybody that's still working, helping us get the necessities that we need, you're you're serving on the front line. Yes, and uh, send us your information, and we want to shout you out too. Hey, we uh, the word was handed down earlier this week that school would be out for the rest of the season, and so um, we want to celebrate our seniors. We kind of knew this was coming down the pike, and how devastating uh, would that have been if it's your senior year in high school? and that's when you go to prom and that's when you do the homecoming. That's when you do all of those things and they don't get an opportunity to take part in that. But guess what? We want to celebrate you. Tyler? Yeah, that's right. Just like with our first responders, our frontline workers, if you're graduating from high school, if you're getting a degree, um, we want to know who you are. We want to celebrate you as much as we can. Um, but what we ask you to do is to send us a photo of yourself. You don't necessarily have to be in a cabin gown or anything. Just send us a photo of yourself, your name, um, and your high school or your college that you're graduating from. We want to acknowledge you, like I said. Um, email us at info at sslive.org so that we can can um, celebrate you. 
I love all the ways on social media that people are trying to be creative and celebrating seniors. I know that uh, online I saw where people are adopting seniors and so, uh, you know, to just to make them feel kind of special. So it really is, it really does warm my heart how even in times like these, people are using the power of creativity, the gift of creativity to really uh, do what we can during this pandemic. But hey, you get an extra, extra special shout out the seniors of 2020. And uh, <laughs> you will never forget your senior year. You will not, but we all love you, absolutely. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I was moving right along. Uh, we want to remind you that um, Simmons College is one of our important missions here at our church. And it's one of the ways that, as a church, we have five goals. One of them uh, is to express God's love throughout the community. And Simmons is one of those um, ways that we are able to express that love. Um, we, wanna, we want you to know that there are still students that are staying here on campus. Um, Simmons gave students the option to leave campus, but didn't require them to leave campus. So there are... Um, um, students that are still on campus who are having some food insecurity. St. Stephen Church is located in one of the poorest zip codes in Kentucky, um, and because of that, there's a lack of food options. So we want to encourage you to donate um, as often as you can. Um, we still need bottled water, canned goods, chips, cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, noodles, paper towels, toilet paper, toiletries, really anything that you can think of. Call us, call our hotline to assist with that at 502-357-6670. Again, that number is 502-357-6670. And we want to give a very special shout out um, to the Whites for donating a lot of yes. food yes. to our students. I, feel, I thought I heard that they spent over $1,000 $1, uh, to, to support our students. So thank you to the Whites for that generous um, donation of not only your time, but also financially um, for that donation. All right, we wanna tell you real quick about an event that is coming back to West Louisville and St. Stephen Church has been so blessed to be a part of it. We're talking about the COVID-19 antibody testing. And so um, we wanted to make you aware that it's gonna be taking a place again this Saturday, April 25th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we will have more information about that coming up. But again, it is the COVID-19 antibody testing, and that is April 25th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and I believe, is it in the back lot? Is that where that's taking place at? It's in the front lot. Oh, the in the big front lot. lot. In the yep. front lot, okay? So just letting you guys know, everyone was talking about it. We're super excited. It's going to be happening again this weekend, FYI. We also want to um, make you aware of an event, uh, all of our senior saints. Um, we want to thank Dare to Care for allowing us to provide meals to seniors. Well, I know as a church we subsidize some of the donations, but Dare to Care was a big partner with us um, for what we did for the seniors. And I believe we gave about 30 meals um, to members of St. Stephen and to even people that weren't members of St. Stephen. Um, so let's take a, a look at this video. Um, I think it gives more details about it. Good morning. Once again, this is Mark McCoy over here at St. Stephen Family Life Center. I don't know if you can even see what we've got going on here, um, but right now, there's a good view. Uh, we're preparing some boxes to go out for some seniors. And these seniors does not have to be a member of St. Stephen, just anyone in the community. Um, you can see that um, uh, right now we have 30 box boxes today. Um, these 30 boxes are already um, accounted for. But what we're going to try to do is to continue to do this as donations come in. Um, we're definitely going to send them right back out. So first on the, you can see Pat Matheson. Trying to act like she ignoring me right now. But she's going to turn around and give a 30-second interview. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we've got um, 30 boxes, um, compliments of Dare to Care Food Bank and we're going to service some of our seniors today. We went out and bought some additives to add into the boxes. So it's um, just a way to let the seniors know that you know even through this, we wanna make sure that they're taken care of. Um, we've got some eggs and some bread, um, some pasta. So it's just enough stuff to get you through the week. May not be enough to get you completely through, but it definitely will be a help. Some toilet paper and some paper towel. We just want the seniors to know that we have not forgotten about them. 
Okay, can you talk about the senior overhill gang that we've uh, served? All right, twice? and we are back. Thank you so much, Miss Pat Matheson. Big shout outs to Pat. She does such wonderful work for the Family Life Center, Inc. Make sure you say Family Life Center, Inc. And uh, we thank her for everything she does. We're so blessed to have her. That's right. Uh, Miss Crystal, you want to give some shout outs while we're here? I do. You know, that's my very favorite thing to do. Uh, real quick, Mr. Vic Page is watching from Miami. How is the sun shining there in Miami? Hope you're uh, staying safe. Miss Jessica Green, how you doing, girl? She shared some information last week, and I'm so excited for her. Congratulations to Miss Jessica Green and her husband. Do you think I should say it? Okay, congratulations, Jessica Green. Uh, Miss Tracy Mitchell, how are you doing, Miss Tracy? We miss you, we miss that soprano voice. We absolutely love her and uh, Mother Mitchell and the rest of the Mitchell family. Uh, Miss Tasha is watching as well. And we're gonna go over to sclive.tv, I believe. Mr. Tyler Anderson, and big shout out to Ms. Sherry Mills, who is our moderator uh, for Facebook, and Ms. Arnett Story is the uh, moderator for YouTube. Listen, we've got, uh, we've got, okay, welcome to, thank you for your love, stay healthy, absolutely. Ms. Arnett, how are you doing, Ms. Arnett? Uh, big shout outs to her and all the people that are watching on our YouTube platform, and uh, what about sslive.tv? None yet? Okay. So that means it's still time for you to join. And we always say for the maximum, for the best viewing experience, please tune in to our sslive.tv platform. Uh, anyone else we've got on here? We've got a lot of people. Miss Sandra, how you doing, Miss Sandra? Miss Sharon Burnley is watching. Where are you guys watching at? I know, uh, you know, I'm stuck in the house all day with the girls, and so sometimes when I want some alone time, I'll go sit in my car or go to the laundry room. Uh, just let us know where you're watching from, and again, we thank you so much for tuning in and uh, supporting this broadcast. Speaking of supporting, do you want to tell us, uh, tell our viewers how they can support this ministry? That's right. There are several ways that you can support this ministry. One of the ways is by simply sharing this broadcasting, but also financially. There are several ways that you can um, support this church because this is the, the operations of St. Stephen Church still continue Absolutely. providing services to seniors. Um, all of that takes money to keep the lights on, things like that. Um, but uh, you can give uh, via PayPal on our sslive.org. You can give um, using the giving button. Hold on, close your eyes while you do it. Tyler can do this in his sleep. <laughs> Tell us which way I don't, you can I'm give. I'm not looking at anything. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you want me to do it? You really want me to do it? Go ahead. Okay. So you can give through at sslive.org and .tv by hitting the Give button in uh -huh. the upper right-hand corner. Uh, and when you click that, you'll be taking, taken to a page where you can type in the amount of your gift as well as the, your credit card information, uh, and you can click Submit that way. PayPal, as I said, is an option at sslive.org. Just scroll to the very bottom of every page and click the yellow <laughs> button that says Donate. You can also text oh, come to on. give. Come by opening a text message uh, and uh, type the phone number 77977 and text the word S-S-C-L-I-V-E and you'll receive a response with the link in it. Uh, and then you can also give via Cash App, Cash app. Uh, that little green dot, mm -hmm. that little green app on your phone. And when you do that, um, use the cash tag, which is the dollar sign SSC Live. One And you can also mail in your gift to 1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. Pastor Tyler Anderson, <laughs> we thank you so much. And I just heard that she just walked in. And so we want to say again, happy birth, happy birthday to you. Miss Pam Green of our deaf and hard of oh, hearing ministry. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> How are you, girlfriend? 21 years old, looking beautiful. And we want to wish her a she very look a day happy over 18. birthday. She's always smiling, always. you guys. And always. that is so important. You know, during this time of social distancing, you know, you walk into a store and you have someone, you know, everyone's having their head down. Everyone's scared. But it costs nothing to be nice and give a smile. Okay? A smile. And again, we say here at St. Stephen Church, we're practicing spiritual closeness during this time of social distancing. We also want to remind you of a few resources that are available for you. Um, uh, they're actually provided through several different organizations. Uh, if you need to open a bank account um, so that you can receive your stimulus check, or if you need to ca uh, cash your check, um, maybe you don't have a bank account and don't really want to open one, Bank on Louisville is a resource for you um, where you can um, 
open a, a, a bank account there. You can also visit Kroger, um, and they are waiving all of their check cashing fees. And I know it's tax time. Yes. Um, so uh, you can get free tax help from Lab C Services. Also, the tax, uh, the deadline for the tax is have been pushed back due because of the situation. And speaking of deadlines, do we need to go back to the census? I know we kind of like a bounce around the census. Are we going to show the video? Okay. Make sure that you are counted. We have something to show you real quick. Make sure that you are uh, taking this downtime to be counted and send out and fill out your census form. Watch this video. If please. I could do one thing, I'd make sure that there were more textbooks in schools. I'm a teacher. I've seen the need. But my girlfriend here likes to say, Don't just talk about it. Be about it. And we're about the 2020 census. Because when hey. everyone gets counted on the census, it helps inform public funding in our neighborhood for the next 10 years. <laughs> so don't just talk about it. Be about it. Complete the census online, by phone, or by mail. Shape your... So make sure you, okay, make sure that you stand up and be counted. Hey, real quick, uh, we're going to leave you with a good fitness video. Tyler, show your guns. Tyler is getting his health, them off a little health bit today, and wealth in during this time <laughs> of uh, quarantine. But um, don't forget, this weekend is Founders Day. We are celebrating 19 years of having our St. Stephen Southern Indiana campus, and we've got some special things planned for you for this Sunday coming up. And don't forget Sunday worship is Sundays at 9 30 a.m. and if you want to check us out the pre-show begins at 9. Tyler? That's right so if you if you um, are have been an Indiana member even if you haven't you've just visited campus maybe once or twice and you want to share with us a memory that you have at that campus shoot uh, pull out your phone turn it sideways um, and send us a 30 second video to info at ssclive.org. I think actually tonight is the deadline to submit those videos so after service, please give, send us your favorite memory from the Indiana campus so that we can share it on this coming Sunday um, during our Founders Day celebration. That's right. Miss Kenya <laughs> is saying whoop whoop in the back because she is repping Southern Indiana. Miss Barbara, I see you here on this thread. We want your video, okay? 30 seconds or less of a Southern Indiana memory. Big shout out to Miss Monica. Big shout out to Elizabeth. She said that Tatum is watching and Miss Wil Wilma is uh, watching as well. And Big Tab Miss Tabitha just. Uh, joined us and let's well. let's shout out denise dukes that is the daughter of miss pam green your daughter says happy, happy birthday bir uh, praise team can you say happy birthday to miss pam <laughs> okay that was jason <laughs> Jason. All right, real quick. During this time of uh, quarantine, we're stuck in the house. The gyms are closed, but we've got our favorite power couple, Miss Dewan and Jordan Means, here again with a very healthy tip. Hi Church family, Dewan and Jordan Means here and we just want to share a few tips on how you can keep your fitness and nutrition goals on track while being healthy at home. I know a lot of us are working from home now so it's important that you keep a schedule for your fitness goals and maintain it. So if you're going to go out and go for a mile walk or you're going to do some type of exercise a day, put it on, put it on your agenda for the day and make sure that you complete it. And piggybacking on that, the same goes for your food. Make a schedule for what you're gonna eat in terms of breakfast, snack, lunch, snack. Keep on track so that you're not just randomly eating throughout the day. And when it comes to the actual food that you're eating, put a priority on real whole foods. That's fruits, vegetables, um, beans, nuts, whole grains, seeds, things like that. Um, I know that it can be hard to find what you're looking for in the store right now. So look for fresh, frozen, canned, whatever you can find, just put a priority on those whole foods. And I do know that you're gonna have some snacks in your house at this time. That's totally understandable. Just be sure when you are eating those things, get a serving out, put it in a bowl or a bag, and don't eat directly out of the bag because when you eat out of the bag, you're more likely to overeat. And those are just a few things that you can do right now. I know it can be a stressful time, but we do wanna still keep putting a priority on our fitness and nutrition. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Dewan. And Jordan Means, and make sure you're eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. Let's put the snacks away, people. All right, listen, services, getting ready to get started. Tyler, real quick, you want to let them know how they can stay connected? Yeah, you can stay with, connected with us. And everything we have talked about resource-wise is posted on our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and on our website, ssclive.org. You can find all of the resources that we've discussed. If you need any technical assistance during this entire service, please call us here at the church at 502 583-6798 extension zero. And all of our, our, our St. Stephen Church Southern Indiana members, don't forget, send us your 30 second video um, of your favorite memory at our Southern Indiana campus. Send that memory to info at ssclive.org. All right, here is what you came here for. It is midweek Bible study coming down right now. God of the hydrated life. Let's get ready to worship. COVID-19 is a real issue, but we are serious about our fight against the virus here at St. Stephen Church. So listen, as some of our staff members give you healthy tips to keep you safe during this time. Stay healthy at home, only leave home for essentials, such as groceries once a week. Please avoid crowds and gatherings. Avoid crowds of any size. This includes family visits, recreational areas, and crowded shopping. Practice social distancing. Maintain six feet between you and others at all times. Know when to seek care. Follow the Know When to Seek Care guidelines at kycovid19.ky.gov. Stay up to date through reliable sources such as kycovid19.ky.gov. Wash your hands with warm soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And disinfect all surfaces. Apply for benefits. Kentucky has expanded unemployment benefits. So if you have not already done so, please go to kcc.ky.gov. You have to do your part. You have to read. You got to pray. You have to prioritize your mental health. There's a, a link at the bottom of the screen. Check it out. Virtual mental health exercises, whatever you have to do to stay calm in this pandemic of COVID-19. Do not travel. The safest place for you and others is at home. Do not travel by plane or by car. Report non-compliance. If you see individuals or businesses not complying with COVID-19 guidelines, report to the KY Safer Hotline at one 833 K-Y-S-A-F-E-R. Hello, I'm Kevin Cosby, pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church, and this is my boss. We would like to welcome you to St. Stephen Church online. For we are one church in two states on three campuses. You do not have to belong to St. Stephen Church for us to belong to you. Welcome.
on this wild Wednesday where we come to worship God, we come to praise God, and we come to get the word of God tonight. We are grateful to be in the house, and we are grateful for you to worship, be worshiping with us tonight. We love you. We adore you. We adore God and we praise God for everything that he's done. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We come to lift you up. We come to magnify you. We come to glorify your name. We ask that you would have your way tonight, that you would bless us um, in worship. And, and we're, uh, the word is already blessed. So as the word is delivered from our pastor, God, that you would bless us through the word that you've given him for us tonight. Have your way. Anointing fall fresh on us. Somebody out there uh, might be dealing with issues of, 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 of a lack of love or, or, or uh, no hope. But God, tonight through the worship that you would give them the hope, that you are the hope restorer, that you are the burden bearer, uh, that you are the heavy load sharer, that you are our joy, our peace. And God, we ask tonight as we worship you and we give ourselves away to you, God, that you would have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Won't you sing with us this medley of worship songs?
Give the Lord praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team, for leading us in worship. What an awesome message they've given us already. I'm so excited for the word that Pastor Cosby has for us today. He's talking about um, a, a personal verse during a public virus. Of the hydrated life, the God of the hydrated life. Welcome, welcome to you, welcome to all of you that are watching this broadcast all over the world. You could be watching Bible study anywhere else, but you chose to worship with us this evening, and for that, we are so grateful. So on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby, and his beautiful wife, First Lady Barnetta Cosby, the boss, we want to welcome you, welcome you, and uh, please do us a favor and share this broadcast. That's right. Share this broadcast with as many people as you can. Host a watch party. Do everything that you can to invite somebody to worship with you today. We also want to remind you that giving is getting ready to come up in service. So please familiarize yourself with all of the different ways that you can give via PayPal, Cash App, and through our, our Text to Give platform. Um, and also, we want to encourage you to get Pastor Cosby's message notes. He has supplied us with message notes every week that you can fill in on our St. Stephen Church app. You can download the PDF at sscLive.org. Um, and also, if you are on our email list, you receive an email from the church every time 
our message notes already. You get them directly into your email. And don't you don't want to miss all of that wonderful information. Hey, let me tell you, our online community was thriving, and it's gotten larger uh, during this time of social distancing. But big shout-outs to Miss Endure, who has been a faithful watcher on our SSCLive.tv platform. And we want to thank her so much. She did a very special prayer to uh, St. Stephen's Technology, our uh, technology department, singers, the groundskeepers, and Rev and his family. Thank you so much, Endure. Thank you so much for being a faithful viewer. And again, don't forget to share this broadcast. Well, now we are getting ready to give Pastor Ken is coming with more information. Pastor Ken. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Tyler. It's giving time in the Lord's house and it's giving time in your house. Let's show the love of Christ in our lives. You, you know what? I heard Tyler and, and Crystal in the pre-show and they were talking about the celebration that's coming up for 19 years in Indiana. Isn't that amazing? That's fantastic. 19 years ago, the vision was to watch this, overcome the barrier of the river. Because there were some folk, they didn't want to come over the bridge to come to church. You know what? We went over the bridge to them to establish St. Stephen's Southern Indiana to overcome a barrier. Some while after that, we overcame the barrier of driving all the way down to Hardin County to be able to have worship. So we established worship in Hardin County to overcome that barrier. And most recently, We've overcome the barrier of COVID-19 to be able to come to you online with this worship service. So God is good, and I love my church. I love the opportunity to support this church that's overcoming barriers to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. As you prepare your offering, I'd invite you to join me for a word of prayer tonight. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that even in the midst of COVID-19, that we still have cause to celebrate. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that uh, COVID-19 cannot steal our joy. And we know that joy is spelt J for Jesus and Y for you, and that O is a zero in the middle, that there's nothing in between Jesus and each and every one of us. So, Lord, with the confidence of the children of the King, we present our offerings tonight in that name that is above every name, in the magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Ken. He's good, isn't he, y'all? Hey, this is the part of the service where we get to worship the Lord in giving. I say that all the time because we mean it. How good has God been to you? When we look around us, we're looking at the providence of God. He's kept us. If you've still got food on your table, if you still have clothes on your back, that's just enough reason to continue to give God praise. And we're giving him praise, worshiping him through giving. Tyler, tell them how they can get in on giving. There are several convenient ways that you can give. If you're on our SSCLive.tv platform, or if you visit our church website at SSCLive.org, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a Give or Giving button that you can click, and it'll take you to our donation page where you can type in the amount of your gift, give your debit or credit card information, click Submit, and send us your tithes and offerings that way. PayPal is also an option at SSCLive.org. You can scroll to the very bottom of every page there and click on the yellow Donate button at the bottom, and you can give via PayPal that way. Texting to give is also an option if you're on our Facebook or our YouTube platforms. Open up a text message on your smart device and type in the phone number at the very top, 77977. Text the message S-S-C-L-I-V-E. And when you send that message, you'll receive a response back with a link in it that you can click so that you can give your donation there. Uh, Cash App is also an option. You can type in the cash tag, which is the dollar sign, S-S-C-L-I-V-E, one, SSC Live one, and you can give via Cash App that way. If you don't know what Cash App is, it's a nice green icon with a dollar sign on it, and you can find it in your App Store and in Google Play. Also, if you don't want to do uh, any of the online uh, convenient ways to give, we also encourage you to send in your gift and mail it to St. Stephen Church to the attention of the trustees. And the address here at St. Stephen is 1018-1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. Tyler, no one does it 
better than you, and no one gives better than you. We want to thank each and every one of you. Praise team, can we give them a hand? Every week you've been devoted and have been, your giving, your sowing has allowed us to continue to do what we do best, and that is bringing you the gospel. And no one preaches down the house like our pastor. A powerful word is coming up, the God of the hydrated life. Don't go anywhere. Let's come together. Let's give together and continue to worship together. Listen, we want to encourage you that the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. You got to know that it's... Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey!
I hope you know that a ship that does not have a sail, I don't care how pretty that ship is, it's a ship that's not going anywhere. And without God, we're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere worth getting to. Without God, as the song is singing to us, teaching us, without God, I can do nothing. But with God, there is nothing I cannot do. If it's a mountain, you can climb it. If it's a valley, you can cross it. If you get knocked down, you can get back up. You can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens us like a ship like a ship like a ship God, God blessings upon you. Thank you for being with us tonight, uh, Wednesday Bible study, uh, giving you each Wednesday and on the weekends uh, news you can use from the Word of God. And uh, we are in a series on Wednesday night on a verse for the virus. It's the 23rd Psalm. Before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to St. Stephen Indiana, happy anniversary. St. Stephen, Hardin County, God bless you. St. Stephen, Louisville, St. Stephen, Dosker Manor, and, in, and to all those who are tuning in, may God bless you. Special shout out, happy birthday shout out to Sister Pam Green, who is our signer. Amen. She's a teenager and looking good. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Do me a favor, uh, help get the word out, uh, help do some evangelism. You remember? that as a church, evangelism is one of our core values. Exalt God's greatness, evangelize God's word, world, equip God's people. And that's what we're doing. We're doing those three things right now, exalting God's greatness. We've done that in worship. Evangelize God's world, help get the word out that uh, we're online, and we're going to equip God's people as we look at the word of God together. Psalm 23. Our focus will be on verse 2, but let's read again Psalm 23, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And last week we looked at how the shepherd leads the sheep to green grazing pastures. Leads them to green pastures. Finds nutrition for the sheep. We are also told in that same verse that not only does the sh shepherd find nutrition leads us to green pastures but the shepherd finds hydration for the sheep and the sheep need both nutrition green pastures and hydration still waters and notice what it says in verse 2 he leadeth me beside still waters he leadeth me. The shepherd leads the sheep. He leadeth me. Notice what it does not say. It does not say the sheep lead the shepherd. It doesn't say that. It says the shepherd leads the sheep. Which means then, then if the shepherd is leading the sheep, who is up front? Well, if the shepherd is leading the sheep, that means that the shepherd is out in front of the sheep. The shepherd is not behind the sheep trying to push the sheep to green pastures or push the sheep to still waters. Instead, the shepherd is in front of us bidding us, follow me. Follow me, 
We may take a turn you may not understand, but follow me. We might be moving in a direction that does not make sense, but keep your eyes on me. Follow me. I am leading you. I'm leading you to green pastures for your nutrition. I'm leading you to still waters for your hydration. I like that. Which means then that what this is saying the shepherd does for us, the contribution the shepherd makes in the life of sheep is this, is that the shepherd feeds me and the shepherd leads me. The shepherd feeds me and the shepherd leads me. The shepherd provides and the shepherd guides. So he provides and he guides. He provides hydration, provides nutrition. He provides and he, he, he guides. The shepherd protects. Things don't get to me because the shepherd protects. But you can't ask the shepherd to protect if you don't let the shepherd direct. So if the shepherd directs, then you can be assured that the same shepherd that is directing you is the same shepherd that protects you. So the shepherd does two things, as it's in your message notes. The shepherd leads and feeds. Leads and feeds, nutrition, green grass, <laughs> still waters, hydration. That's the shepherd's role. But the sheep have a role to play as well. So if the shepherd leads and feeds, that means then that the sheep must follow and swallow. Shepherd leads and feeds. The shepherd leads and feeds. The sheep follows and swallows. In other words, if the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is leading me, that simply means that God determines the direction of our lives. And that's important. Because let me tell you what life fundamentally is. Life fundamentally is a series of choices. We are today what we are today because of a choice we made yesterday. We will be tomorrow what we will be tomorrow because of a choice we make today because life fundamentally is about choices. And whenever we make the wrong choice, there will always be consequences to those wrong choices. And whenever we make the right choice, there will always be consequences to those right choices. How many of us wish we could go back and get what they call in golf a mulligan, a do-over, because of a choice we made that has consequences? And the shepherd knows that when sheep make bad choices, that can be very detrimental to the sheep. So the shepherd says, follow me, sheep, and I'll lead you. I'll lead you. Put this in your message notes. We make our choices. We make our choices. And now listen to this. We make our choices, and then our choices make us. We make the choices and then the choices make us because choices have consequences. So when this, in this psalm, when the writer says, he leads me beside still waters, that means that the shepherd is going to lead us and it's our responsibility to follow. He leads me beside still waters, which means that the shepherd is leading the sheep towards hydration. And if the sheep don't have hydration, if they're not hydrated, they pass out, bottom line. And the reason they pass out because they have several things that they have to deal with. First of all, uh, a Palestinian sheep, Palestinian sheep were in a very hot, dry, arid environment. So it was already hot and arid. And then in addition to that, sheep have this heavy, heavy wool coat. How would you feel if you had to wear a heavy wool coat in August? How long would you last outdoors in August with a heavy wool coat on? Well, that's what the sheep has on. Down that wool, in that heat, 90 degrees, 100 degrees out there underneath that simmering 
Palestinian, Palestinian sun. So it, to avoid the overheating, the shepherd leads the sheep to water, to cool down, to deal with what the sheep has to carry. And God wants to lead us to still waters so that we can manage what we are carrying in life. Still waters. But let me say two things, which is basically what I want to communicate in this message. Just two things about water. Two things. Point number one. It's just a two-point sermon. Point one is this. Water is life. Water is life. As I've already said, shepherds, you can fill in the blanks, provides nutrition. He makes me lie down, what, in green pastures for a nutritional sake. And then the shepherd provides hydration. That's right, hydration. He leads me beside still waters. Now, there are three ways that shepherds provide hydration for sheep. One is way that shepherds provide hydration for sheep is by eating the grass. So early in the morning, the shepherd will take the sheep out to the green pastures and they will eat the grass and that is one of the ways in which sheep were able to get hydrated because on the green grass there is the dew and the sheep not only get the green grass but they also get the the moisture the dew that is also on the grass so it's like a secondary blessing and God is so good and God can bless you one way and then there's some additional subsidiary and additional blessings that come uh, with the other blessings, the primary blessings that God gives. So they eat the grass and they consume the grass and the dew is on the grass and that's how they become hydrated. A second way is by cisterns or wells. They're those cisterns, when the rain will pour down into the wells or to the cisterns, then the shepherd will find a well and the shepherd will dip his bucket down in that well and, and will work hard on behalf of the sheep, working on behalf of the sheep, <laughs> pulling up that pail and pouring the water into a trough so that the sheep can hydrate themselves. And God has been working on our behalf and you know what? As sheep, we should show some gratitude. We should say, thank you, Lord, for how you have hydrated me. But the final way and the primary way in which a shepherd hydrates the sheep is not only by letting them eat grass that has dew on it, and not only by taking the bucket and putting it down in the well and in the cistern and putting it in the trough for them to eat. But the shepherd is always on the lookout for still waters for waters for the sheep uh, now you may ask why still waters it doesn't say he leads me beside waters but it says he leads me as a sheep beside still waters why still waters why not fast waters why not rushing waters why does it say still waters well the reason it says still waters is because sheep are intimidated by rapidly moving water, fast moving water, because sheep are poor swimmers. And you can understand why a sheep is a poor swimmer. And that is because it has this big wool coat on. And if by some chance that sheep slips and falls into that moving water, that Though that, that wool coat that, that that sheep is wearing will be, a, that water will be absorbed in that wool coat and that sheep will drown. So the shepherd, knowing, knowing what the sheep can handle, knowing the nature of the sheep, turn around and doesn't say and criticize the sheep and say, well, why aren't you like a dog? Dogs can eat from fast-moving water or why aren't you like a coyote or some other animal the shepherd knows the nature of the sheep and says I'm going to adjust things 
to accommodate you. He leads the sheep besides still waters. In other words, while we won't, watch this, the water is not moving like this, real fast, while the sheep is just, uh uh-uh, I ain't touching that. The water is moving, like, watch this, watch this, real slow. And the sheep is able to get the blessings because the water is moving slow. Now, sometimes we, we, we won't follow the shepherd to still waters because we want to go to waters that are not moving slow. We want to go to waters that are like this, shh, 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 that are moving fast at an accelerated pace. Because let me tell you how we want our blessings. We want fast moving blessings. We want what we want when we want what we want. And if the things that God is sending our way to hydrate us, to bless us, is not coming in ambulatory speed. Then we say, bye, shepherd, (laughs) you're taking too long. This water is moving too slow. Your plan and purpose, in fact, it seems like nothing's coming. This is still waters. I, I don't want my life to be still. I want what I want when I want what I want. I want it right now. I've got right now itis. Hurry up, itis. So the blessing doesn't come fast. Sometimes God's blessings come like steel waters. And if the blessings of God come to you by way of slow steel waters, could it be that just like a shepherd knows the sheep, that the shepherd knows you and that the shepherd knows what you can handle. So if the waters are moving slow, you should pray, God, bless me at a pace that I can handle. Don't give me a job if I'm not ready for it. Don't allow me to find that person and get into a relationship if I'm not ready for it. Because sometimes God is getting a blessing ready for you, but God has to get you (laughs) ready for the blessing. Because if you fall into some water that's moving and you're not ready for it, you'll find yourself in something over your head. So, you know, happiness, listen to me, is not getting what you want. It's not happiness. Happiness is not getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you got. Because you can get it and then find out later on, you know what, I I don't really like this. Like the little boy who loved pancakes and his mother said, I'm going to fix him all the pancakes he wants this morning. And she said, all you want, I'm going to give it to you. And she kept on putting pancakes on his plate and more pancakes on his plate and more pancakes on his plate. And then she looked up at him with pancakes in 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 the griddle and said, do you want some more pancakes? And she, he said, mama, I don't want the ones I got. And many times God will say, do you want some more of what you've been praying for? And you say, God, I don't want what I got. I don't want it. I thought I did. So he, watch this, he, he takes the sheep beside slow-moving, still waters. It's coming, but it's coming slowly. And sometimes your blessings are coming, but they're coming slowly. You're not where you want to be, but hey, you're not where you used to be because your blessings are coming slowly. And notice, notice what this verse 2 says. I, I think this is what really gets me. And this is very important, I think, for where we are in our nation as it relates to COVID. This right here, this is just, it just, when I was meditating over this word in my study, I mean, I was just musing over it and it jumped out at me. I mean, just jumped out of the Bible and jumped into my mind and heart and said, tell him this, preacher. And that is the simplicity 
of what the shepherd provides the sheep. The utter simplicity. Notice he, he's leading them. He's giving them two things. Just two things. Green pastures. Still waters. Nutrition. And hydration. Just some basic stuff. It does not say he leadeth me to the mall. It does not say he leadeth me to the car lot. It does not say he leadeth me to a football game or a basketball game. Because all of the things that we think God needs to lead us to does not provide nutrition and it does not provide hydration and this downtime because of COVID has taught us that some of the things that we wanted God to lead us to we really never needed. We're getting along without it. And the reason we're getting along without it is because what we fundamentally need is the hydration and the nutrition that God provides. That's why Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, you know it, but my God shall supply all you need. That's a 23rd Psalm verse. I shall not want. My God shall supply all your need, all your needs. Please note, and this is an important fill in the blank, that God will supply all of our needs, but it does not say God will supply all of our wants. Because there's a difference between a need and a want. What does the sheep need? Suppose the shepherd gave the sheep a brand new Cadillac. The sheep still would feel like something's not right. Then it's suppose he put some money in the sheep's bank account. So the king, sheep has money and the sheep has a Cadillac. The sheep would say something's not right. And then let's suppose the shepherd says, okay, I'm going to lead you not only to a brand new car and a brand new bank account. I'm going to lead you to a brand new apartment. It's a nice apartment. It, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's really nice. And the sheep has the apartment, has the money in the bank, has a sheep wardrobe. I mean, gets, gets, its, gets its wool done right at a sheep beauty shop. But that sheep is miserable. Because while it is good to have those things, there is nothing that will substitute for green grass. And nothing that will substitute for still waters. I love what Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 5 through 10. He says, these people think religion is supposed to make you rich. And religion does make your life rich. Watch this. By, we'll stop here. By making you content with what you have. In other words... What COVID is doing for us is hopefully when we get to the, what, the BC, beyond COVID, that what we've learned during this slowdown about how simplistic our life is, that we won't, after this, go back to some of the complexities that define our life. With all the stuff and the complexities and just simplicity. Let me define simplicity for you. It's in your message notes. This is very important. Simplicity is the absence of artificial ornamentation, embellishment, flamboyance, showiness, artificiality that we add to our lives to hide from each other who we really are. So we get a whole lot of ornamentation and clothes and hair and stuff, all this artificial stuff that we add layers and layers and layers and layers 
because we are insecure <laughs> and we want to hide who we really are beyond all this stuff. But now you can't have the stuff. And if your hair's messed up, it's just messed up. If your nails are not dead, it's not your nails are not dead. If if it's just what it is, and it doesn't matter. Because you're comfortable now with who you are. Because none of those things define you. See, the greatest sign, please, please fill in the blank. The greatest sign of spiritual maturity is not getting more, but needing less. In other words, some of the stuff I thought I needed, I don't need. Some of the people I thought I needed to like me, I ain't seen them. And guess what? I'm sleeping at night. I don't need them. Some of the concerts I thought I had to go to, guess what? I ain't gone to none, and I'm just right. I didn't need it. Some of all the things that I've been spending money and been broke all these years over, I'm now finding out I did not need it. But one thing I cannot do without, and that is the Lord. I can't do without the water. I can't do without the nourishment. I need him, and so do you. So you see, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Why? Because water is life. It's life. And in the Bible, guess what? Jesus not only is our shepherd, but he often refers to himself as the water. He calls himself the water. The shepherd leads us to the water. He is the water. John chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus says this. He says, uh, on the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and shouted, If you are thirsty, come to me and drink. Come to me and drink. Have faith in me and you will have life-giving water flowing from deep inside you. Just as the scriptures say, he likens himself to water. This is John chapter 7. But if we could peruse back to John chapter 4. Remember, there was a woman at a well. And she, uh, she said to Jesus, she said, she said, who do you think you are? Are you, you you're greater than Jacob who built this well? And Jesus said to her, Whoever drinks from this well, well, you got to keep on coming back. But whoever drinks from the well I give you, I'm going to put an artesian well in you that will bubble up. Oh, I'll, it'll bubble up inside of you. Because Jesus is liking himself to water. And that's a good metaphor. Why, why is Jesus liking himself to water? Why water? First of all, salvation is like water. Good illustration. Because first of all, anybody can drink water. You don't have to have a college degree to drink water. Anybody can drink water. A child can drink water. And guess what? Anybody can get to know Jesus. Then that's why... Jesus is like water because anybody can drink water and anybody can have access to Jesus. And then everybody needs water. And Jesus is saying, I am water because everybody needs me. You need water. Our bodies are nothing but big water balloons. Did you know that your body is 70% water? You are a walking Water balloon. Every cell in your body needs water. Water. You need water. You need hydration. And just like everybody needs water, everybody needs Jesus. And guess what? Here's something else about water. And that is water, when you drink it, can go where you can't go. So when you drink the water, if there is something dry uh, in that needs nourishment because your foot is chapped and until you get some water and some hydration, you're not going to get your skin smoothed out. You drink that water and the water can go in you where you can't go. And I'm here to tell you, when you have Jesus in your life, he can go to places inside you. 
in your thinking, in your grief, in your pain, he can get to some places nobody can get. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Anybody can drink water. Everybody needs water. Water can go where you can't go. And then finally consider this. You don't have to tell water where to go. In other words, let's say if your elbow's ashy and you need some water, do you know when you drink the water, the water already knows your elbow is ashy and will go to, you don't have to say the water, please go to the elbow because the water already knows when you drink it where your dry places are. And God, when you receive him, already knows where you are dry. Because water is two things. Water is life. And then a second thing is this. And we're through. Water is death. It's death. Proverbs 25 and verse 26 says this. When a good person gives in to the wicked, it's like dumping garbage in a stream of clear water. In other words, what he's saying here is that that same water, if it's clean and fresh, can bring life. But if that water has garbage in it, pathogens, then guess what? Those microorganisms in that water creates disease, virus. We're talking about covid that is animal-related viruses, but most viruses like malaria comes from toxic water. And if you're drinking from the water that the Lord is leading into you, then you'll have vitality. But if you're drinking from some of the streams you used to drink from, if you're drinking from some bad relationships, if you're drinking from some habits and some thoughts and values, then that can be death. And that is why he leads me beside, not fast moving water, but he leads me beside still waters. He leads me. And in this 23rd Psalm, as I close, the only phrase in the 23rd Psalm that is repeated twice is the phrase, he leads me. In verse 2, we are told, he leads me. Besides still waters. In verse 3, it says, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths that are righteous. So the, twice, the writer says, he leads me. So if he says it twice, that means he's, he wants us to know, guess what? He, that the shepherd will lead you. He will lead you. It's mentioned twice. He'll lead you in the paths of righteousness. You know what that means? The, the right path? That means he, he's going to keep you on track. He's got some way he's trying to take you. And he's going to lead you there. And he's, gonna, he's got you on track. But you've got to follow the leading of the shepherd. And he will lead you. He'll lead you. And may I say this, as he's leading you, you don't understand where he's taking you. Never judge the path God leads you on until you get to the end of the path. Which is to say, you're sitting here saying, this doesn't make sense. This, isn't, this doesn't seem like I'm getting anywhere. Well, guess what? Wait until you get to the end of the path. And you'll look back over it and say, I didn't know what the Lord was up to, but he was leading me and I was following him. A door shut and I was leading him and that door shut, but I'm glad it shut because that shut door is what got me to another door. He leads me. Never judge the path. God leads you on until you get to the end of the path and then fill in this blank. Don't criticize an unfinished plan of God. He's leading you, but he's not through. You might not be where you want to be, but if God is leading you and you're submitting to his leadership, then it's an unfinished path. God is taking you there. I love 
what, what the writer of Psalm 77 says. He's talking about the children of Israel. Remember when God was leading them out of Egypt and he took them in a roundabout way? The Bible says that he took them uh, not by the way of the Philistine coast, which was the quickest way, but he took them by way of the wilderness. And they looked up and they are right in front of a red sea. And there's mountains on both sides of them. And the shepherd who's been leading them looks like that the shepherd needs a, some type of GPS because we're moving in the wrong direction. That's why Pharaoh came after them because Pharaoh said, you know what? This God who's leading them has a bad sense of direction because he's leading them towards the Red Sea and mountains on both sides of them. But this is what the word said. I recall the many miracles he did for me long ago. You, your road, when you were leading me, God, your road led by a pathway through the sea. Watch this. A pathway no one knew was there. You led your people along the road like a flock of sheep with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. In other words, go back to verse 19. It says, God, you led us. Verse 19, chapter, uh, chapter Psalm 77, it says, your road led us by a pathway through the sea. We got to the Red Sea. We're sitting here complaining, God, where are you taking us? But there was a pathway there that no one knew was there. And there are some pathways for you that your mama don't know is there and your daddy don't know is there but the Lord knows it's there where he leads me I will follow I will follow him because he's going to lead me to green pastures and I'm going to have my nutrition He's going to lead me to still waters. And the waters may come slow, but he knows that I can handle. And I'm going to drink, and he's going to lead me beside still waters. And there's a reason why he's doing it. There's a reason why he wants you to have some nutrition. And there's a reason why he wants you to have some hydration. Because up to this point, we've been in Psalm 1, 2, and 3, and everything's looking good. I mean, it's good to shout and say hallelujah when you got green pastures. It's good to shout when you've been restored. He's restored my soul. It's good to shout when you've got still waters and hydration. But that's the first three verses. When you get to verse 4, all hell breaks loose. Yay, though I walk. Through the valley, I went from being in green pastures beside still waters, and now I'm in a valley. And guess what? It does not take long for your life to transition from green pastures. It does not take life long to transition from still waters and wake up one morning and you are in a valley. Everything's going well and then you get a phone call. And when you pick up the phone at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're in a valley. You go to the doctor and the doctor says, I see something on your breast. And all of a sudden, just yesterday, you were in green pastures and still waters. But now you're in a valley. But guess what? Come on, valley. I can deal with you. And the reason I can deal with you is before I got to the valley, God had already given me my nutrition, already given me my hydration that allowed me to get through the valley. In fact, some of you can say that if God had not already given me all this Bible and all this word and his spirit before the hell came, I never would have been able to make it. And the reason why he wants you hydrated and the reason why he wants you a uh, uh, nutrition, uh, nutrition field is so when it comes, you can handle it. 
He's given you enough strength to deal with it. If somebody had told you that you were going to have to face what you're facing, you would have told them there's no way I could have faced it. But you did. And the reason you did is because before you got into your valley, guess what? He nourished you and he hydrated you. Now, you know what? The number one hydrating company in the world is Ozark Bottle Company. But I've been watching on Netflix Ozark. And I don't recommend that if you're trying to get your spiritual life together that you go to Ozark Hydrating Company. Instead, the one who will be your Ozark, the Ozark for your soul, is Jesus Christ. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He gives me the simple things that I need. This is the last thing I'm going to tell you. There was a devout Christian man who took a gamble with his business and it didn't pay off. He was wiped out and lost everything. And he went to his preacher and he said to his preacher, and this is a devout Christian man with tears in his eyes, Pastor, I have lost everything. And the preacher said, everything? He said, I've lost everything. He said, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your character. He said, no, I still got that. He said, I'm sorry to hear that you lost your faith. He said, I still have faith. He said, I'm sorry to hear that you lost God. He said, no, I still have God. He said, then you have not lost everything. In fact, <laughs> you have not lost the most important thing. Because if you have nothing but your faith and nothing but your character and nothing but God, you have everything that you need to rebuild. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What about you? What about you? Would you pray with me wherever you are? Let's pray together. <laughs> Heavenly Father, you're not behind us pushing us. You are in front of us, leading us, beckoning to us. Follow me. You lead, you feed. We follow, we swallow. And if the water is not moving fast, you know what we can handle. So help us to trust you and the pace that the blessings that you give us come. I pray, O oh Lord, um, that you will help us to really learn simplicity. You did not lead the sheep to the mall. Malls close. You did not lead the sheep to car dealerships because car dealerships close. You didn't even lead the sheep to a vacation by way of an airline because vacation spots close and beaches close and airplanes close and restaurants close. But the water that we need for hydration of our spirit 
and the nourishment we need for our strength will never close and we will always have you help us oh God it's to maintain some simplicity and not be so cluttered with the things that really do not matter and Lord when you're leading us and it seems like that we're between mountains and a Red Sea is in front of us don't let us judge where we are until you finish the process because you know a way that no one knows but you help us we pray to trust you more in Jesus name Amen. The Lord is not a shepherd, but the Lord is my shepherd by way of personal invitation, by inviting God to become your shepherd. God wants to shepherd you. God wants to have a close relationship with you. And God will guide you. And God will not only guide you, but God will protect you. And God will keep you. But will you follow Will you trust the Lord to be your shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd? Won't you trust him? We want to invite you, if you've heard the word, to say yes to the Lord. That let this be the birthday of your soul. And you say, yes, Lord, I want to be a, uh, one of your sheep. I want to follow you. I'm going to trust you with my life now and beyond this life. I know you got a place for me in heaven. And I'm right now accepting you as my savior, as my deliverer. And if that's what you're doing, I want you right now to email us at info at ssclive.org or to call us here at St. Stephen Church at 502-583-6798, extension zero. This can be the greatest day of your life and a new beginning maybe God shuts you down because he wants to he wants to uh, reboot you so he shuts you down so he can reboot you God's got a blessing with your name on I want you to, to to accept him and get in touch with us here at St. Stephen Church amen amen we're going to hear this song and then I'm going to come back and close this out in prayer thank you for being with us tonight
Amen. Praise God. Amen. And God will lead us. And without God, we are what? As Yolanda sung so wonderfully today, like a ship. Like a ship without a sail. Without God, we can do nothing. But with God, there is nothing we cannot do. Uh, next week on Wednesday night, we will transition to something, and that is valley time. This is an important word to hear next week when we transition from green grass. We want to stay there in still waters. God, we love that. But what happens when we're in the valley? What happens? How do you make it through the valley? What is different about valley time? And we're going to talk about the valley next week. And all of us, we are either in a valley, just left a valley, or we're on our way to a valley. So you want to make sure you're with us next week. Special shout out to everyone, uh, all of our St. Stephen members, especially my deacons. God bless the greatest deacons that any church could ever have, the serving deacons. God bless you. <laughs> Sister Beverly Jones, I'm thinking about you, girl. Amen. I was preaching, and I heard you over here in my spirit uh, saying, praise, pastor. So God bless you, Beverly. All of you, God bless you real good love you so much miss you so much i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord and we will go once again into the house of the lord but until then we shall have god's house in our house because we cannot really have worship in god's house if we're not also having worship in our own house the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he gives me nutrition because he makes me lie down in green pastures. He gives me hydration because he leads me beside still waters. He leads me, he leads me, he leads and feeds. We follow and we swallow. 